The anti-democratic forces President Biden is trying to rally Americans against tonight are not coming from somewhere outside. They are very much here already, metastasizing inside the Republican Party. And they are on the ballot right now. Joining me now is the host of All In and my dear friend, Chris Hayes. Thank you for staying at the office late for us. It's great to be here. Um, I really wanted to talk to you about this, given your body of work on the subject matter. Mm -hmm. And also this just absolutely strange and perilous moment we all find ourselves in as, as Americans, as members of the news media, as people that follow this stuff incredibly closely. We all watched President Biden's remarks tonight. And... I, the first thing I wanted to ask you about is whether you think that there is actually a distinction to be made, as the president insists there is, between Republicans and MAGA Republicans. I mean, I do, because I do think that if, if you look at the dividing line about sort of, do I have faith in an individual that they will concede an election they lost in a timely manner? Like, there is a distinction between certain characters, like Mike DeWine in Ohio. Okay. Mike DeWine in Ohio is pulling up 15 points. I think he's probably going to win. But I think that if Governor Mike DeWine lost an election, he would concede. He's actually lost elections. I covered an election he ran against Sherrod Brown in 2006 in the Senate, and he lost. You know, So, yeah, I think there's a difference between the kinds of individuals in the Republican Party, and I think, still think there are many, who would concede that they lost and move on. And then, like, do I think that Mark Fincham, who's running for Secretary of State in Arizona yeah. and is polling behind, let's be clear, to the polls that we have, that if Mark Fincham loses... The Arizona Secretary of State race, is he going to say, eh, you got me? Yeah. No. Like, probably not. So I think that distinction actually does have some meaning. And I'm so, well, I guess I should say there is a distinction between not only MAGA Republicans and reg regular uh, truth uh, right. accepting Republicans, but also who is who, who we're talking about. There are the elected officials. And then there's the grassroots. And I and and I at this point, I truly feel like the grassroots are actually leading the party, right? Yes. And and in the in the numbers, if you look at who is in the Republican Party and what they believe, 61% of them believe the election was stolen for Joe Biden. The president of the United States, Joe Biden, who won, I think wants to believe that that number is smaller, or he believes in the yes. goodness of that co this well, country. And and two thirds of the Republican Party, as it is the people of the Republican Party, does not believe he is legitimate. No, I mean I think the math that you're running there is correct, and I think it was incorrect in the president's speech where he called them a minority of Republicans, which I don't think they are. I think they're a majority. It's the majority dominant faction in the Republican Party, though not entirely. Right there are there's a minority that is not in that faction. It's the majority faction that runs one of two parties. It is a minority in the broad American populace, which still to this day retains a robust pro-democracy majority yes. along the lines of 60 percent, I would say, probably. But there is a, a dominance of this anti-democratic faction in the Republican Party. And that's really the, the whole issue. You have a two-party system. You have a competitive democracy. We have a multi-party democracy. You can't have a multi-party democracy if one party keeps winning elections. They have that in some countries, Mexico for decades. They've had it in South Africa for decades. They had it in India for decades. That's not real competitive multi-party democracy. Yeah. So by definition, the parties are going to take turns with power. If one party can't be trusted with that party, that's where the breakdown happens, and that's exactly what we face. Right I now. kind of think of these, and I'm, I'm obviously projecting I don't have a crystal ball, but I tend to, th I'm, I'm thinking as we watch these moments unfold, like the one we did tonight, 2020, 2022, and 2024 as kind of a tripartite stress test of mm -hmm. the American democracy, yeah. right? 2020 is the uh, sort of test of an external threat. Do the, does the center hold? Do the institutions hold up? In large part, they do. 2022 is the voters. Can they distinguish between those who are lying to them? Do they want right, to distinguish? Yeah. Who do they elect? 2024 is, if we do elect all these election deniers into office, what happens to the well, system when it's corroded from the inside, okay. as opposed to the threat coming from the outside? This is a great building. point, and I think there's two things to think about, right? So one is just election night and election week after 2022, which is what happens of the Mark Finchams in the world. At some level, I suspect and, and hope that if they lose, they'll lose and they'll be gone. <laughs> I hope I retain hope. But it's also like Trump has opened the window for all sorts of mischief, right? But then the other thing is like, forget Carrie Lake and forget Mark Fincham and forget um, Marchant in Nevada, okay? Just a Republican House. The precedent was set in 2020 for the first time that is a matter of the U.S. Constitution that after the whole country runs an election where we spend half a billion, a billion dollars on the election, 
Then the House meets to decide, like, do we like that result? Right. Let's vote on it. Like, that's, no, 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 no. We just ran a whole election. But that was the precedent set by 2020. So if the Democrat wins and a majority Republican House is going to be like, I don't know. What do you think, fellas? Should we keep this? So that, that's already before we even get to, like, all the crazy mischief that can happen in state certification, all the crazy mischief that can happen in electors. 2024. Just the fact that it has been introduced as a precedent in 2020, yes. that the House is going to have this vote that's no longer pro forma, no longer a ministerial stamp that says, yes, these, these are the results. It's a, I don't know, fellas, what do you think? That itself is corrosive. Yeah, even if you don't get the seat, you may be pulling the curtains down from the windows as yeah. you are escorted out of the building. Yeah. And yeah. where, what, what ha kind of house does that leave you in? I, I before I let you go, because you've earned, you've earned your keep this evening. You get to go. <laughs> Thank you. Dinner. I, 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 it really feels like not an overstatement to say we are living through history, and this we could be witnessing the end of liberal democracy. I, mean, I, I say that almost like it's hard for me to. It's. Yes, I mean, but I... Th those are the stakes. I mean, Biden is not overstating. No, this is I don't... not political rhetoric. No, I totally this agree. This is a man who understands his place in history. And when books are written, they will mark down, he gave this speech six days before the 2022 election, because there is going to be some outcome in the next month or year that is significant in terms of liberal democracy. I totally agree. And I think, you know, we, we talk about this... this terminological dispute about fascism or what other foreign models. I mean, we had competitive multi-party democracy in the American South for about eight years after the Civil War that was replaced by one-party authoritarian single-party rule. So it's happened before. Yeah. Um, I guess my, my only feeling is it's... I don't want to foreclose what happens on the other side of any given election, because civil society still exists, courts still exist, speech still exists, mobilization still exists, we still have these platforms. Like, And so it's not like there's like some like definitive, like, people need to understand that, like, and I thought the president did a good job here, is democracy is a process and not a destination. It's a journey, not a destination. It's something that you're working on. And so whatever outcome happens, whatever assaults on there are, you, you try to vouchsafe it and defend against it as an active effort day in, day out through whatever means you have at your disposal. Um, and that's going to be the case uh, two weeks from now, no matter what. We will do our part yeah. to keep democracy going. My friend, it's always good to see you Great and to, to talk you. with you and hear your wise words about what's Thanks. happening. Thanks for your time. You